Hey folks, so here. it's good we can come together again for about 15 minutes and cover some scriptures and have a service, a, a, a real good one today. I've got some words from the 19th chapter of Acts, verse 1 through 7. We're going to kind of go down to the river today and think about our Lord's baptism, about our baptism and what it means. I know all of you that I'm speaking to uh, probably have been baptized at one time or another, maybe in your younger years. It's always good to remember that baptism. And certainly from the words of the Apostle Paul here in Acts, it was such a, a important thing that people understood in the early church, the people that Paul preached to, exactly what this means, this baptism, and what kind of baptism were they having. Apparently there were different types of baptism. There was the baptism of John, and then there was the baptism that really we feel like Jesus was speaking of, the baptism of fire and the baptism of, of the Holy Spirit. You know, baptism, as we think about it a lot of times with the water, whether it's immersion or sprinkling or pouring, that's about water. It's, it's a symbolic act. It's a ritual. And in the Methodist tradition, baptism is seen as an outward sign of an inner grace. And if you don't have that inner grace, then the water baptism really is to no avail. It's just water on your skin. You know, you can, you can clean your skin with water. Baptism was already a part of the Jewish tradition at this time. They, they did it in their synagogues. It meant a cleansing, a purification of people to prepare them to be in the kingdom of God. So let's look at what, in Acts 19, verse 1. While Apollos was in Corinth, Paul passed through the interior regions and came to Ephesus, where he found some disciples. There was beginning to be disciples of Jesus Christ all around the Mediterranean, and there were already some here at Ephesus, and Paul had encountered them. Apollos was certainly one of the preachers in this time, and sometimes Paul would see him, but most of the time they were doing things in different parts of the empire. So Apollos was in Corinth. Paul came to Ephesus, and he saw these disciples and he said to them, verse 2, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? And they replied, No, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Which is amazing. Of course, remember that the only scriptures people had at that time were the Hebrew Bible, which mentions the Holy Spirit, like in creation and all of that, but they really didn't have all the information that they needed it. So they're saying they didn't receive the Holy Spirit. Sometimes when you believe in Jesus, and when we say that, we, it's, not, it's more than just believing there was a Jesus. It's actually believing in Jesus so deeply 
that from the teachings of Jesus, you, you seem to have an awareness of someone who is powerful, someone that can help you, can, if you take Jesus in, if you believe and, and you take him in, then it's almost like the Holy Spirit is being evoked, is being called to come to you, but it takes the belief and it takes the profession of faith. And so a lot of people were doing this, and, and Paul just wanted to make sure that they understood that this, these two types of, of baptisms, really three types of baptism, I might say, one was the baptism with the water, and certainly that was initiated with John the Baptist. And then there's the baptism of Jesus, which is the Holy Spirit baptism. So this baptism of the Spirit is the main one. This is the one we rely on that we have any chance of salvation. So they said, we haven't even heard of this. Then he said, into what then were you baptized? And they answered, into John's baptism. John began baptizing at Tizing in the river of Jordan, and many people came to him, and he would preach to them. And many of them would say, well, I believe what you're preaching is certainly important. He told them that they had to repent. They had to turn around. That's literally what that word meant in the Greek language, is to turn around, to stop doing what you've been doing and, and, and start all over and, and do different things, do more powerful things than recognizing that you're being called all the time into the kingdom of God, but you've got to change. This was Paul's preaching and his baptism was symbolic of that change. We don't know exactly how Paul or how John the Baptist baptized, I can't imagine they would get down into the water. The river of Jordan was not that deep. And John would take his hands and bring up the water and just bring it down, let it fall upon them. So John's baptism, these particular people that day in Ephesus, that's what they had had. John's baptism. They weren't baptized by John, but John, just like Jesus, had disciples, and some of his disciples carried on his work on into the years following the execution of John, and so they were familiar only with this water baptism. Paul said, Verse 4, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him, that is Jesus. Paul was the messenger of the good news, really, of Jesus, that Jesus would come, and he would have even a better baptism. Jesus would have a, a more powerful baptism. And not that Jesus himself was baptizing, but Jesus was baptized by John. He followed the, the law about this. He didn't really need to be cleansed. Jesus was holy and but he, he went ahead and went through the baptism, and, and, and John 
this is a little bit different version than what we see in the, the Gospels about Jesus being baptized, but John just says <clears throat> that John's baptism was a baptism of repentance, a, a sign of change, a sign of getting the light, your life straight and turning around from what you're doing. But Jesus is coming. John said Jesus would come and John said believe in him. In verse 5, on hearing this, these ones that were there at Ephesus, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. So many people began to be baptized in the name of Jesus, but it was, all, it was not always the case that they were actually being baptized by the Spirit because the baptism with water usually is a one-time event. I know it is in the Methodist tradition. You're baptized one time. You can remember your baptism, and I asked all of you today to remember your baptism, a very special time. But then the baptized baptism of the Holy Spirit is a can be a lifelong thing. It's the Spirit dwelling within us that cleanses us and you might say burns away because it's called the Spirit of fire, the Spirit of the Holy Spirit, the baptism of fire. It, it burns away our impurities. It changes us. And it's not necessarily at the same time as the baptism of water, but it's a lifelong thing. Baptism of the Spirit, this, this is what really gets deep within us and rids us of our sin, rids us of our way of thinking, turns us into a new creation by the Lord, a new creation as followers, true followers, of Jesus Christ. Now, after they were baptism, baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus, verse 6, when Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied and Altogether, there were about 12 of them. Note how this number 12 throughout the Bible, the 12 tribes of, of Israel, the, the 12 disciples. And here are these disciples. The writer of Acts says that they were about 12. I've never experienced anyone speaking in tongues and prophesying after their baptism, any of that I've done, but it, it has been done before. It's seen as a time that we're opened up, and if, it's, and if it's a true baptism, possibly people could do that as signs of they really had the Holy Spirit. If there's no... Baptism by the Holy Spirit and fire, then we need to really question ourselves. If we don't feel like we've changed, that if we're on the road to being 100% purified and be a follower of Jesus, then we need to think about it. Because that has to take place. These are scriptures from Acts that I just covered. I would like now for you to think about your baptism, cherish it, and examine yourself for the baptism of the Spirit. May we pray. God, thank you for this day and all of the days that we live following your Son, Jesus Christ. Thank you for the act of baptism that so many of us have went through, but Remind us, Lord, that the true baptism is the spiritual baptism that completely transforms us. 
to be true followers of Jesus Christ. We pray this in his name. Amen.